Hello, and welcome to this uh, talking monologue thing. I don't, I don't know what to, what to call it. Um, well, it can be a discussion, of course, as well. Like, I'd like people to respond to things and have a dialogue. But, um, yeah, this is about... This is standing in defence of the recent uh, Netflix controversy, Cuties, um, because I think people are completely, completely missing the point and uh, are very acting incredibly short-sighted and hypocritical um you know especially the anti-sjw people um <laughs> who you know basically there's a big lack of understanding of what fiction is anymore um but yeah this people call this a pedophile film uh, it's completely that's a <laughs> beyond um superficial and, and ignorant i think um the whole point of this film is to highlight and show you the over-sexualization that goes on and the early, you know, sexual exposure that kids have these days, uh, often, and how harmful it can be. That's the point of the film. Um, that's the point of the poster, because um, if you, <laughs> if if the poster was all dark and scary and was going, oh, this is you know, there's a, there's a paedophile stalking these kids or something, people wouldn't take that seriously. They go, oh, it's another, it's a horror movie or it's a crime movie. You know, it's that people, people, people would think, oh, it's this fiction. It's done for effect. It's meant to make you scared. You know, it's entertainment, right? People wouldn't take it seriously. Um, so you. So, so what they did was they did a poster that shows you and looks a lot like the things that it's criticizing, right? Like Disney series that are about kids becoming pop stars or about kids, you know, I mean, you get those pop things for kids and it's like, do you, you know, should we really be making celebrities out of like 15 year olds or 12 year olds or whatever you know they're, they're going to be in an adult world that they don't know how to handle and the, and they, their lives will be ruined right they'll, they'll be on drugs they <laughs> they'll have no privacy um they'll have no sense of who they are as individuals and they'll go crazy and we we have that lifestyle constantly promoted pushed you know you've got to be on You've got to be popular. You've got to be on the up and up constantly, and and don't take things too seriously. You know, don't don't look after yourself. Don't, you know, take just take risks. Just be silly because if anyone does anything wrong to you, it's their fault, and you take no responsibility in it at all. You know, and that's the message that we put that we're constantly pushing, and you know, and this is a film that is um, criticizing that, <laughs> and put people completely misunderstand it, and it, and it's a shame. People calling for censorship as well, which is the worst thing you can possibly do because it means all we do is bury the issue. I don't like that poster. It's got sexualized kids on it. Take it away. And you go, it's like you take the poster away, but then behind the wall that the poster was on, there are actually kids being sexu sexualized or abused or whatever in real life. It's like we're not even facing up to the fiction that was placed before us because we're so you know emotionally charged and it's like well hang on think about it like just think logically do you think netflix are putting up fucking pro pedophilia propaganda are you crazy <laughs> like that's insane you know to to me this is you know so so some some analogies it's like is a clockwork orange pro ultraviolence pro rape no Right, Alex is loving it though. Right, they're the main character. That's a film about a gang of kids who are crazy psychopaths who love murder and violence and rape. Right, but it's not it's not pro that. Right, the whole point of the movie is it's about freedom. It's like, well, we either have freedom, which will allow psychopaths to to abuse that and do horrible things, but if we want to clamp down on all villainy, we have to also clamp down on freedom. You know, it's like one or the other. It's the price of freedom. That's what that film is about, right? It's not pro-violence, you know? I don't think that movie would be allowed because on one hand, <laughs> on one hand, you'd have people saying, oh, it's, uh, if, if people thought the Joker was fucking gonna, you know, empower white, privileged, you know, violence uh, people, then Clockwork Orange certainly would, you know? Because <laughs> that's exactly what it literally is about. These guys, they're exactly that description. 
And then on the other side, you'd have these people that go, oh my God, it's sick. It's about a guy singing in the rain while they're raping someone. How sick. You know, how could that movie ever be made? <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, Dr. Strangelove and How I Learned to Love the Bomb. It's pro-nuclear war. It says love the bomb. <laughs> it's like, you don't understand the fucking satire, the irony. You're missing the point. 1984 that's showing this dystopic world about a government that it tells you how it works. It tells you how you can control speech. You know, he, whatever, who controls the past, controls the future. That's not pro-tyranny, right? That's not, it's not meant to be a guidebook for dictators, right? It's anti, it's saying everyone should read it so that they are aware of the problem, right? Just like everyone should watch this movie and be aware of the sexualization of kids. Because so, a, a lot of people won't be all that aware because they won't have kids. They won't have the same worry, right? So those people need to witness it as it is in its strongest and worst form in order to be in order to see why it's bad. And that's, what this, that's exactly what this movie was doing. And it's exactly what Netflix was doing. And, I, and I, 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 it's, it's such a shame because it's like, you know, I don't really rate Netflix very high. I think, you know, I mean, most, whatever, American media is, at the moment, it's, it's very commercialized, <laughs> right? And yet, with this, they did something incredibly, you know, clever with the advertising. And... Um, but in a way that would actually help the film, right? It would help the point of the film. Not just help the film get make money, which is usually the priority, but actually it was helping the movie make its point. And instead, people just haven't even taken two seconds to think about this through logically at all, or question what it's actually about, what the motivation is. They just see it and think, <laughs> this is a film for paedophiles. It's like, fucking hell, are you crazy? Like... If paedophiles wanted a movie, firstly, they can go on the internet and there's fucking sick shit on the internet, real stuff, that we don't face. We don't tackle it, right? Imagine if a movie came out about that and it was going, oh, here's a salacious, you know, well, so, you know, <laughs> illegal, horrific, abusive film about this girl or whatever. People would be outraged by the, that film being made rather than the real issue that it's actually trying to expose and address. You know, people are behaving like grannies thinking that Iron Maiden are satan Satanists because they have the devil on the front cover of uh, Number of the Beast, right? It's the same stupid reaction. It's people thinking that, oh, the blood, it's too, it's too realistic looking. People will go start becoming vi violent and get addicted to it. So we make blood look pink and silly, which is what we did prior to, like, the 80s, right? That's why you're looking at old movies and they have ridiculous fake-looking blood. It's not because we couldn't make realistic blood. It's because it would, whatever, increase the rating, or maybe it was even X-rated. I'm not sure. It depends on the country, of course. But Okay, and, and the, the, the frustrating thing is that the people that have immediately made videos think that they're on a, cru a righteous crusade to put down Netflix you know, who that is often this woke, you know, entity or whatever. And they think that they're, oh, oh my God, they're pro-pedophile, they're pushing the boat out too far. They didn't even fucking stop to think about it and take a look at it. And they're being hypocritical because they complain about when, you know, SJWs call for censorship. It's like, no, we can't, this movie is, um, you know, it's, it's all white and therefore it is a symptom of... Uh, you know, white supremacy in our society, which is ridiculous, right? But then you're saying, oh no, this is this is must be pro-pedophilia, we have to censor. It's like, you fucking, are you a dumb, come on. <laughs> like, use your brain for a second, stop getting emotional for a second, and just think about it, and watch it, and find out the truth. You know, these people are sort of playing this journalistic role to, like, reveal what's going on, and... and in, uh, you know, whatever, woke media, but they don't actually do the journalistic thing to look into it and think, actually, what is happening, you know? <laughs> Why is this happening? You know, and for what reason? And they call for censorship. They call for the thing that they're against, you know? And I bet some of these people were also the people that applauded Japan for telling whatever it was, I can't remember, where was it, the UN or someone to go fuck themselves when they said, oh, you know, there's, there's lollies in, in, in hentai and it's like, and it's, and it's sick and degrading and abusive and, 
you should stop that. And Japan says, fuck off. Right. And then people go, Hey, yeah. Telling the, um, you know, the old women or whatever, metaphorically to go F themselves. Fantastic. Right. And now they're doing the same fucking thing. Because it's the because it's the same thing. In fact, in fact, it's a, <laughs> it's not the same thing because it's better, right? This film that is uh, anti-sexualization of kids is more moral <laughs> than <laughs> Lolly Hentai, right? And yet, people are, are willing to accept that as just a just a thing because it's fiction, because it's cartoons, it's not real, you know. Well, this is fiction. This is fiction. It's not real. Girls were not abused in the making of this film. <laughs> it's the message it should probably say at the beginning. Um, although not that people would get that far to watch it. But so it, it's 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 just hip hypocrisy. <sighs> people don't understand fiction anymore. I said that as one more thing. People don't understand the concept of fiction. People who say that like um, speech is violence. That's ridiculous. Right? People who say that you know movie being made by rich white people is racism ridiculous people who say that a film that's not <laughs> that a film that is a fiction that's not a piece of crime evidence is not pedophilia <sighs> the thing is you could go further than that though that's like you could go further and say actually if this was literally a pedophile film which is crazy it would should still be allowed to exist because I believe in freedom of speech, you know? Act, I actually believe in freedom of speech, not when it makes me right or when it makes me look good. Like, actually, I think things that I don't like should be made, <laughs> you know? Because I don't have to, I don't agree with what you're saying, but I defend your right to say it. And that should be applied to this too, you know? But yeah, people need to, people need to get sophisticated, especially, especially if you want to, defeat, you know, wokeness in, in, a, in a correct way, in a, in a non-authoritarian fashion, right? Because they are author they're authoritarian themselves, which is why they're bad, right? It's not necessarily that what they're saying is bad, although it is, um, it is often wrong, but when they're calling for authoritarian backing, legal backing, or they want companies to shut things down that they don't like, well, you can't play the same game. You can't play that game because then you're just the same. It doesn't matter whether you're right or wrong. You're still you're still doing the tyrannical and, and dumb, simple-minded thing, and you're missing the point. You know, it's too high art or whatever. You know, and I, and I'm and I say that ironically. I don't think, you know, I'd, I'd like to hope that people are above that, but a lot of people aren't, and then they have a voice, and so the companies act. You know, and that's a shame. Uh, so that's my response, I guess. Um, you know, I hope I made the point clearly. Um, <laughs> and you know, if you have anything to say, any response or whatever, then sure. But um, yeah, pro freedom of speech, pro pro intelligent messaging, like, and that's that's ignoring again, ignoring the actual intention which I do not think <laughs> is pro-pedophilia. And the artists themselves have said that it's not, right? It's supposed to expose the reality of the situation. But even if it was, a fiction is a fiction. So thank you for listening. Uh, I've been Fraser, and, you know, subscribe if you feel like it. But I don't know when I'll upload other things, but uh, this is kind of just part of a, a little dialogue on a, on a hot topic that is close to my heart, because I like fiction. I think it's a very powerful tool. As this has proven, which is one good thing, <laughs> it shows you that people can care. But um, it's like we're not ready for uh, clever stuff, you know, for intelligent discussion just yet uh, as a human race. <laughs> so thank you for listening and I'll see you on the next one.